medical school, Dr. Ban and Proma had started through Professor C.O. Eastman. He did not hesitate to come back in 1967 and was appointed a registrar position in the Department of Surgery, Kolibu. The following year, he was appointed a lecturer in the Ghana Medical School. And he taught anatomy and surgery. Prof, being a brilliant academician and a clinician, rose quickly through the ranks. Having been promoted to senior lecturer in 1972, associate professor in 1976, and professor in 1978. During this period, as we've already heard, he obtained a master of surgery degree from the University of London in 1974, and was also awarded the fellowship of the International College of Surgeons, USA, in 1975. He received the fellowship of the American College of Surgeons in 2015. He was appointed head of Department of Surgery from 1st January 1981 to 1990, and dean of the medical school from 1984 to 1989. And his appointment was renewed for a second term from 1989 to 1994. He simultaneously held the headship of surgery and deanship for a good seven years and performed very credibly. He was able to build up the school during the period of massive exodus of the cream of lecturers to Nigeria and the Middle East. In the time of low staff morale and against the background of economic hardship in the country. Indeed, he is on record as the longest serving dean of the school. In 1997, in recognition of his contribution to the study and practice of surgery, the university appointed him emeritus professor. He continued to teach undergraduates and postgraduates until he fell ill earlier in the year. Prof loved surgery and loved to teach as much as he loved to operate. He was forever prison students, house officers, and surgery residents. As students, he would always catch us out whenever we had not seen our patients and pretended to know them by reading others' notes. He was an avid researcher, publishing many manuscripts in top journals, like the British Journal of Surgery, British Medical Journal, Canadian Journal of Surgery, Ghana Medical Journal, amongst others. He also co-edited Vajak, the surgical Bible for trainees. Brock was a WHO consultant, helping to revive medical schools in Sierra Leone and Liberia after the wars. He was an external examiner to many medical schools across Africa and the world. He later became chairperson of WHO African Regional Task Force on Medical Education. He was a member of the first board of the Kolebu Teaching Hospital and after a year was appointed as acting chairman from 1991 to 1994. Emeritus Professor Champon contributed a lot to the medical school in teaching and learning as well as in governance. He won the best teacher award in the basic sciences in 1983. He was involved in four curriculum reviews of the school to help meet and maintain international standards. His last curriculum review was in January 2020 with the preclinical department. He introduced student-centered, problem-solving methods in medical education. He is credited with helping to establish the dental school and starting the local training of dentists, which hitherto was being done in London, Manchester, and Lagos. He sourced for funds to build a world-class library for the medical school and a new administration block also for the medical school. That edifice now stands as the College of Health Sciences Administration Block. In recognition of his efforts, the University Council in October 2021 approved the renaming of the College of Health Science Library to Emmanuel Bea Champon Library. It's a pity we could not communicate this good news to him before his demise. Despite all his major achievements, he was very humble and respectful to all. On a personal note, he, will, he was always available to listen to me and provide counsel. I will miss the early morning 7.30 meetings I had with him in the surgical department. The University of Ghana, the College of Health Sciences, and the University of Ghana Medical School has indeed lost a giant. Emeritus Professor Emmanuel Bea Champ, may your gentle soul rest in perfect peace. Amen. Thank you, University of Ghana. And now, dearly beloved, 
shall receive music from the rich church choir as we file past.
Thank you very much. It's a three-month tribute to the Department of Surgery, Polibu Teaching Hospital, the University of Ghana Medical School, and the Polibu Teaching Hospital itself. We shall receive the CEO of Polibu, Dr. Ampoma, to read the tribute on behalf of three bodies. Tributes from Department of Surgery, University of Ghana Medical School, and the Kolebu Teaching Hospital. An insatiable researcher, a dedicated teacher, a willing head who is absolutely dependable. These are the words of Professor F.N.L. Eggman, former dean of the University of Ghana Medical School, writing about Professor E.Q. Wachampo. These words appropriately describe our former teacher, mentor, and senior colleague, Emeritus Professor Emmanuel Kweya Champo, who has passed on into glory. It is difficult writing about Emeritus Professor E.Q. Champo because he was a man of so many parts researcher, teacher, trainer, surgeon, administrator, and scholar. His works transcended the Department of Surgery, but we'll try to limit ourselves to our experience of the man in the Department of Surgery. Although his works extended beyond to the Kolebu Teaching Hospital, he was a surgeon, member of the first board of the hospital, you know, and to, the, to Ghana, he obtained the Companion of the Order of the Volta. He was a fellow of the Ghana Society of uh, Ghana. Uh, he, was, he was FGA. He was also the West Africa sub the, the president of the West Africa College of Surgeons. And then he was a consultant to several other countries like Sierra Leone, the Gambia, Senegal, Canada, WHO, etc., etc. Of E.Q. Champion joined the Department of Surgery in 1968 as a young man full of promise, having topped his graduating class in England and achieved distinctions and awards in many subjects along the way. He quickly rose through the ranks to the position of full professor in 1977 78. He was subsequently appointed Emeritus Professor of Surgery in 1996. He was head of Surgical Unit 4 for many years, where he trained many generations of students and trainee surgeons, including myself. He became head of department from 1981 to 1990. For about six years during that period, he incredibly but successfully combined the full duties of surgeon, lecturer, head of unit, head of department, and dean of the medical school. He did all this while maintaining his school self and never appeared harassed. He facilitated the training of young trainee surgeons in England before the West African College of Surgeons and the Ghana College of Physicians and Surgeons became well established. Many of these surgeons returned to Ghana to assist in the training of students and surgeons and the management of surgical patients in various parts of the country. That was the man, a good man, a hard-working and absolutely dependable man. He was principled in all he did. He was honest and was never a schemer. Indeed, he was a man in whom there was no girl. He once wrote back to the vice chancellor to reject his earlier appointment as head of the party because the previous head had resigned by a matter he was in support of. He was principled to a fault. In spite of all his achievements, he was humble and respectful. He had no heirs around him. The consummate researcher that he was, he influenced the practice of surgery in many ways. He was one of the main voices that led to the operative management of typhoid preparation globally. At a time when the recommendation was that operative management was dangerous. Prof. Champon's research interests were gastrointestinal disorders and cancers of the breast, liver, pancreas, and, and the colon and rectum. He had a voracious appetite for writing and was prolific in that regard. It was common to see the secretaries in the Department of Surgery typing volumes of pages of something he had written. Apart from his publications in repeated journals, journals, he was editor of a number of journals and books. One of his greatest legacies is the book Principles of Surgery, including Pathology in the Tropics. 
The book was a brainchild of the first editors, Professors Bedu, Achampo, and Daga. It quickly became the preferred survey textbook for students and surgical trainees, and is currently the most authoritative survey textbook in West Africa and beyond. Students nicknamed the book Bada, using the first letters of the three editors, Bedu, Achampo, and Daga. Thankfully, for the fifth edition of the book, the new editors led by Emeritus Professor Champon bowed to pressure and finally modified the name of the textbook to Badger's Principles of Surgery, including pathology in the topics. With his passing, all the three stalwarts who gave us the Badger textbook have left their legacy in new hands, but their names and contributions to surgical practice in the tropics will never be forgotten. He was a visionary and was innovative in many ways leading change in curriculum development and surgical practice. For example, he, together with Dr. Kote Papafiu of Blessed Memory, started gastrointestinal endoscopic practice in the Kolibutichi Hospital decades ago. He was thorough. His students remember his famous insistence on the length of the inguinal canal being 3.75 rather than 4 centimeters. He also had class and mastery of the English language. During a trip to northern Ghana a few years ago to a funeral, he showed his lighter and funnier side, that he was after all, that he was human after all, and could also let his hair down and be with the boys. His encouragement of students and faculty to take up academic qualifications knew no bounds. Many a member would escape through alternate pathways when he was approaching because they had not done their homework. He was to quietly corner you and get you this was to quietly corner you and get you to deliver. For the 52 years that he practiced and trained students and training surgeons in the department, he actively participated in continuous professional development programs, and he was a regular attendant at the weekly departmental scientific meetings, contributing to discussions, and he was much respected by all. Prof. Champong continued to be very active long after retirement, and indeed was actively teaching and examining till he fell ill earlier this year during the April examinations of the West African College of Surgeons. We had hoped he would recover sufficiently to continue guiding us with his accumulated wealth of wisdom, but God called him home after, excellent, after many excellent years of service. There's a lot we have learned from this great man. They include dedication to duty, hard work, humility, the fear of God, and excellence in all we do. With this passing, the Department of Surgery has lost the last of its founding fathers. We mourn, but we also rejoice, having been beneficiaries of the decades of selfless service by Iman, Emeritus Professor of Surgery, Imano Kwe Achampo, BSc, MBBS, FRCS Ed, FRCS England, MS, FICS, FWAX, FGCS, FACS, OV, FGA. His footprints in the science of time will not be raised. He has fought the good fight and he has won his race. May he rest in perfect peace from his labors. Indeed, an extraordinary life. We thank you. Dr. Poku Ariam Puma, CEO of Polibu, for that emotive tribute. Dearly beloved, this morning with joy we receive in our midst a former Director General of the Ghana Health Service, now Presidential Advisor on Health. He filed his pass now, Dr. Anthony Isia Asari. The Ghana Police Band will offer some music. I shall humbly ask the Rector for the College of Physicians and Surgeons to please stand in readiness to read the tribute on behalf of the Dean.
Japanese band. And now, dearly beloved, the rector of the Ghana College of Physicians and Surgeons, reading on behalf of the dean, make welcome Professor Richard Adanu. A tribute from the Ghana College of Physicians and Surgeons to Emeritus Professor Ikyu Achong. Now David, after he had served God's purpose in his own generation, died and was buried with his ancestors, and so he experienced decay, Acts 1336. This time it's, professor, it's Emeritus Professor Ikyu Achampong who has served his generation. This is a quotation from the textbook, Abdominal, Emergency Abdominal Surgery by Peter F. Jones published in 1987, Octureta hernia. This hernia is better known than might be expected from its rarity and infrequent diagnosis before operation. However, a typical case can be strongly suspected. Rogers, 1959, found 12 cases among 3,000 small bowel obstructions seen over 22 years in Los Angeles. But Achampong, 1968, had the extraordinary experience of treating six patients in eight months in one surgical unit in Walwyn, Hertfordshire. Essentially, the textbook means that to be a good enough surgeon to make a diagnosis of this hernia before operation is rare. To diagnose and treat six cases of this rare obturator hernia within eight months, you must be extraordinary. This is because most surgeons would not see even one in their lifetime because of its rarity. It also says that if you are meticulous enough, you should be able to make that diagnosis when you meet a patient with one. Professor Champong treated six in eight months. Meticulousness. This is a profile of the personality that the Ghana College of Physicians and Surgeons was blessed with as a foundation fellow on its inauguration in the year 2003. A meticulous, dedicated, skillful, and accomplished surgeon. A consummate, enthusiastic teacher for whom the safety of the patient was not only paramount as he imparted the delicate hands-on skill of surgery to the several specialists he trained, but also to restore to health that which had caused the disease. He not only trained the resident to operate, he trained the resident how to train the next generation of surgeons. He was a trainer of trainers. This same attribute was brought to the first council of the Ghana College of Physicians and Surgeons resulting in a well-crafted program of postgraduate medical education in Ghana. He had, of course, served at high levels in undergraduate and postgraduate medical education, both in country and internationally. As head of surgery at the time, he instituted a regular teaching program of lectures and tutorials and actively participated in preparation of residents in the department. He participated in all revision courses of the college and always led the Saturday morning ward round during the courses. At these ward rounds, he would guide the residents through clinical diagnosis and would not only demonstrate, but would also hold their hands and show them how to elicit physical signs correctly. Prof was not only a trainer, he was also an examiner for the college. As a resident, you would prefer to be examined by him. He was a gentleman and fair. But you also must be aware that what you did not know will be found out. Interestingly, whether a pass or a deferral, you will agree with his decision. He did not fail anybody. All he wanted was that you must be safe for the public before you are declared a specialist. Additionally, Prof. Champong was the internal assessor for the college examination from its inception in 2003 to the year 2021 when his request to have a younger person to take over from him was succeeded to. He however continued and indeed examined in a much examination in surgery this year. This time, he sat down to examining the cabinets. In the year 2012, Prof. was nominated the College Distinguished Lecturer and not a controversial that were assigned to him. He, in his characteristic way, always rose to the occasion with precision and addressed the issues satisfactorily. For the first time, he was noted to be absent from the college examinations in September this year, although his name was on the list of examiners. This prompted the college executive to decide to visit him 
and, 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 and why we would miss, would miss the call of a national assignment? Was, was apparently because, because of human, human derailment? No, uh, Archie would never miss a call to national duty. A defining characteristic of Professor E. Q. Achampong is his humility in every situation. He elevates everyone he interacts with such that when he rode a bicycle to work, the humble push bike was elevated in status. We are grateful to God for endowing the college and the surgical community over the continent with such a personality. We are grateful to Prof for his passionate devotion to duty, which stems from his faith and values. We are also grateful to his beloved wife and family, numerous patients, to have access to him, sometimes at difficult times and periods when the family would have wanted him with them. Now, however, now whenever we sing the Ghana College of Physicians and Surgeons hymn, we have another trustful face smiling at us as one of the great and famous men, the fathers named in story. Now, Emeritus Professor Emmanuel Kweya Champong, we allow you to take a deserved rest in the bosom of the Father. We're grateful to you, the Ghana College of Physicians and Surgeons. And now, dearly beloved, bringing all tributes to a close, we're pleased to receive the West Africa College of Surgeons, represented by the president of the West Africa College, Professor Peter Donko. Tribute to past President Emeritus Professor Emmanuel Kuya Champong by the West African College of Surgeons. Emeritus Professor Emmanuel Kuya Champong was a well renowned surgeon, academic, and researcher, attaining the position of Emeritus Professor of Surgery at the University of Ghana School of Medicine and Dentistry. His achievements were recognized nationally and was awarded order of Officer of the Order of the Volta in 2006 by past president J. Kufo in recognition of his outstanding service to Ghana. He had his medical and surgical training in the UK and returned to work in Ghana shortly afterwards, dedicating himself to providing specialist surgical care and the training of medical students and young surgeons in Ghana and the entire West African sub-region. He became a fellow of the West African College of Surgeons in, two, in 1975 and served in various capacities cu culminating in his ascension to the highest position of president of the college from 1997 to 1999. His commitment to improving access to surgery in the sub-region led him to work in Sierra Leone during the hostilities in that country. And he also led a WHO team to appraise the College of Medicine and Health Sciences of the University of Sierra Leone. Professor Champo was a strong pillar of our college, was an examiner for many years, a teacher of teachers, and a mentor to generations of West African surgeons. As past president, he delivered a prestigious Sir Samuel Manuel lecture in February 2016 at the WAX Annual Conference in Cameroon. He chaired the History Committee of the college and was editor of the second edition of the college history book, Knife in Hand. He left his mark on the affairs of our college. He was a gentleman to the core, a master surgeon whose expertise, even temperedness, calm demeanor, warm personality, and friendly disposition 
drew many, both young and old, to him. His wise counsel helped strengthen the unity of our college, and he will be greatly missed. I had the privilege of visiting him at home shortly before his death. We talked about many things, including his numerous travels to the, in the service of the West African College of Surgeons and the sacrifice of his dear wife, Catherine, as she faithfully waited for him at the airport, uncertain about when the unreliable flights would bring her husband home. He inquired about the college and how it was faring and shared his thoughts on the way forward. I thanked him in broken ga for his support and wise counsel, and that tickled him. We laughed a lot during the visit, and when, when it was time for me to leave, he insisted on walking me out of the house. I will forever cherish those special moments and the smile that accompanied his final goodbye wave. Here was a man who, though unwell, exuded contentment. This tribute is an expression of our sincere appreciation as a college of this gem of a man whose death has left us bereft. We take this opportunity to share in the grief of his family and to thank them for the sacrifices they endured while he served humanity. The Wax family shall miss our dear Professor Champo, but we are consoled that his legacy will live on. The council, past presidents, and body of fellows, members, diplomats, and staff of the West African College of Surgeons bid you farewell. Past President Emeritus Professor Emmanuel Queer Champo. May you rest peacefully in the bosom of the Lord God, our Creator. And in one accord, I shall humbly invite all the members of the West Africa College of Surgeons, together with the Ghana College of Surgeons, the Ghana Medical Association, the University of Ghana Medical School, Kolibu, the Department of Surgery, and the University of Ghana College of Health Sciences to file past for the very last time. As they do so, we can only summon grace, comfort, and fortitude for all who have been affected by the loss of this great man. We shall join our hearts together as we sing peace, perfect peace, as a prayer to all who mourn. The Masqua will lead us.
In a short while, we'll bring the pre-burial service to a close. We encourage all who have not found past to please do so now. President of the Republic, he will file past, after which I shall invite the head of family, the widow, and the children to pay their final respects. Dearly beloved, we encourage all who have not filed past as of now to please do so before the arrival of the President of the Republic. While we wait, we shall continue to receive music from the Susan Ousu Chorale.
Rich Church Choir will file past. And thereafter, the Susan Owusu Choir. All in anticipation of the President of the Republic.
the Ghana Police Band for the Vice President of the Republic. Dearly beloved, the Vice President of the Republic, His Excellency Al Haji Dr. Mahamadou Baumia. Please rise. Please be seated. We welcome you, the Vice President of the Republic. Dearly beloved, in a short while we'll receive the gift of the occasion, the President of the Republic. As we continue to wait, the rich church choir will serenade us with music.
And now, dearly beloved, the President of the Republic, Nana Adodankwa Akufuadu.
We welcome you warmly, the President of the Republic. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. And now to far past members of the clergy led by the Director of Religious Affairs of the Ghana Armed Forces, the Reverend Naval Captain Paul Ajay Jan. To bid their final farewell to their grandfather, father, husband, brother, kinsman, and friend, I invite the head of family, the widow, and her children. I ask that we're limited to the immediate family. Our late father. Thank you, Ghana Police Band. Richard Kwa.
And now we take comfort in our belief that if indeed death is a transition to the other world, those like Professor Emmanuel Kwe Achampong, who used his gift of life to benefit not only his family, but also his community, his nation, and the world at large, will be well received. To you, our grandfather, our father, husband, brother, and friend, Professor Emmanuel Kwe Achampong, we say, rest in glory. Band Masha Music, Bear Party Falling.
Let us continue the service in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Shall we please all stand? And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more. For the first things have passed away. Friends in the Lord, we have gathered here this morning to celebrate this illustrious son of our land, Master Surgeon Emmanuel Kwe Achampong, and to commend him into the hands of the Almighty God. Though we come together in grief, yet we give praise to God, for in his son Jesus Christ, who died and rose and lives forevermore, we have an assurance of life that never ends. Jesus says to his disciples, because I live, you shall also live. Amen. We shall sing in praise to God the Methodist hymn 428, printed on page 71 of your brochure. We shall sing the first two stanzas and the last. I will praise my maker while I have breath. Please be seated. And 
Let us pray. Our eternal God, the one on whom we lean and do not fall, you who had been with our fathers and mothers and have in Christ Jesus brought us new life, give us grace that in the presence of death we may yet trust in your strength and power and worship you as Lord of all. In our distress, we may ask, where is our God? But you have made us to know that your wisdom is infinite, so that what we may not understand is no mystery before you at all. You hold the keys of death in your hands, and death cannot destroy those who trust in you. So Father, let your spirit strengthen us, that death and everything else that threatens our peace, and even our faith in you and your goodness, may be seen as already defeated. Death has already been swallowed up in victory. Hallelujah. Heads up, please. After the singing of the next hymn, we shall take the, bi the biography of the diseased, followed by the tributes by the widow and children. The next team is MHB 896, 896. We shall sing the first four stanzas and the last one. Now praise we great and famous men. <laughs> Shall we please stand? Thumbs up. I'll be reading an abridged version of the biography. The full version is in program. 
The late Emeritus Professor Emmanuel Kwe Achampong was born on the 12th of October 1932 in Koligono to the late Emmanuel Kwame Achampong and the late Mrs. Mary Nai Achampong Neyabi, the first born of six siblings. He attended Bishop Boys School in Accra from 1959 to 46 and Accra Academy from 47 to 51. And whilst in Accra Academy, he embarked on a correspondence course in Wesley College in the UK as well. He gained admission to the University of the Gold Coast and studied natural sciences 1952 to 55. Thereafter, gained a scholarship to University College London, UCL, to study basic sciences and obtained BSc in anatomy in 1958. He went in to study medicine at the University College Hospital Medical School, 1958 to 61 where he graduated as the best student in UCL. Between 61 and 67, Professor Champon undertook a wide range of training positions across the United Kingdom. He won many awards and prizes in anatomy and physiology, biochemistry and pharmacology, obstetrics and gynecology, and the Commonwealth Medical Fellowship Award. He came by, through examination, a fellow of the Royal College of Surgeons, Edinburgh, a fellow of the Royal College of Surgeons, England. After his studies in the UK, Prof returned to Ghana in 1967 to give back to his country, where he worked for over 50 years in the Kolobu Teaching Hospital and the University of Ghana Medical School. A year after his return to Ghana, on the 27th July, 1968, he married his sweetheart, Catherine Avulata Konote Ahunu, with whom he had five adorable children, Elise, Ruth, David, Timothy, and Emmanuel. The more credentials followed. Fellow International College of Surgeons, Master of Surgery, London, by thesis. Foundation Fellow, West African College of Surgeons, and Foundation Fellow, Ghana College of Physicians and Surgeons. At the University of Ghana, he rose through the ranks from lecturer in 69 to senior lecturer, associate professor, professor, full professor within less than 10 years. After retirement, he was honored by the university as emeritus professor of surgery. He was head of department 1981 to 1990 and then dean of the medical school in 1984 where he served for an unprecedented 10 years. In his first term, he combined the deanship with the headship of the Department of Surgery. Professor Achampon published several research papers, monographs, and books, including co-editing the famous Baja textbook, the go-to surgery textbook in Ghana and West Africa. He was examiner and external examiner of generations of medical students and surgical trainees in Ghana and beyond. He taught and practiced his surgical craft with passion and a high level of commitment. A few of the other numerous positions he held were President, West African College of Surgeons, Senior Fellow, Association of Surgeons of Great Britain and Ireland, Vice President, Ghana Academy of Arts and Sciences, and was editor of many journals, including Ghana Medical Journal, West African Journal of Medicine, and was on the editorial board of the British Journal of Surgery for 12 years, Journal of the Ghana College of Physicians and Surgeons, Journal of the West African College of Surgeons. He presented scientific papers at many conferences and gave many inaugural lectures, including the Ghana Academy of Arts and Sciences, the University of Ghana, J.B. Damkwa Memorial Lectures, and the Ghana Accra Academy Foundation Lecture. He was consultant to the WHO on many missions, including to Guyana, Ethiopia, Sierra Leone, and twice to the Gambia. He won many accolades. A selected few. He had lifetime achievement awards with the University of Ghana Medical School, Medical and Dental Council, Ghana College of Physicians and Surgeons, and he was honored with the honorary fellowship of the American College of Surgeons. He also had national honors, and what many of us are not aware, 
He was honored with the national honors of the Republic of Senegal, the Order of the Lion, Knight or Chevalier in 1997, and was honored with the national honors of the Republic of Ghana, the companion of the Order of the Bolton. Prof lived a full and thoroughly enjoyable life as a surgeon, a family man, colleague and friend who had time for everyone. He loved teaching. He was actively teaching until March this year. He would leave Pokwasi on a Saturday morning and meet the students in Kolibu, and he found this very fulfilling. When asked if he will ever retire, his response was, I am enjoying what I do. He was an encourager, gently nudging you alone to be your very best. He was kind, gentle, and generous to a fault. In spite of all his achievements, he was a model of humility. Above all, Professor Champon was a devout Christian. He had a very strong faith, having given his life to the Lord early on in his life. He was a member of the Accra Reed Church and the Men's Fellowship. He loved the Lord, worked with the Lord, relied on the Lord and the grace given him. The family's enduring memory is of him playing hymns on the organ on Sunday mornings, sorry, Sunday afternoons and evenings. He also loved classical music, and his children were subjected to classical music when he chose to listen to it. However, over the years, they all came to appreciate his much-loved Beethoven, Handel, and Mozart. He happily enjoyed a treat from his classical quartet during his last birthday. Professor Emmanuel Kwe Achampong has lived a life of service, and he has made a significant impact on his generation. He survived by his dear wife, Catherine, his five children, Ellis, Ruth, David, Timothy, and Emmanuel, and a wide extended family. He will be sorely missed, but his legacy lives on through his works and in the many people he has touched. Emeritus Professor Emmanuel Kwe Achampong rests in perfect peace in the bosom of Almighty God. Amen. Shall we now take the, the Bidos tribute to be followed by that of the children? Tribute by wife, Mrs. Catherine Awolata Achampong. The Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. My Emmanuel and I met in Kolebu in 1968. By the providence of God's grace, after a few months of courtship, we were married. It was indeed love at first sight. God has blessed us with five children and 12 grandchildren. Our lives have been lived in Christ Jesus. There has not been a day when we have not prayed for each other. There have been challenges along the way, but the goodness of the Lord brought us close to each other and to the Lord. We lived a great life together, and I thank God for what Ima has done for me, our family, and indeed, those he interacted with. He was a family man and loved and cared for his siblings, cousins, aunts, uncles, and indeed, the wider family. He was always involved in every family event, especially in supporting in every possible way. There are many memories and moments we shared that I will forever treasure in my heart and keep to myself. But as you are all here with me, I will share just a few with you. Ima loved music. He played the organ brilliantly, and after church, he would play all the songs we sang at church over again. I would all often join in providing backing vocals to support him. On one occasion, he paused, playing, turned and smiled so warmly at me, as he often did. He said to me, Awulata, your voice is not on the keyboard. To which I responded, how do, to which I responded, how do you mean? He said it, it is a semitone lower, and we both laughed. That was my Emmanuel. Accuracy and precision was important to him. 
It was a normal Saturday in Kolebu. I was helping the children with maths practice on simple additions like 45 plus 19 to help them master carrying. They were making progress, so while I was in the kitchen, I asked Emmanuel to give them extra sums with a slightly higher level of challenge. They came back saying Daddy had given them sums like 29878 plus 99999. When I asked him why, he didn't answer but smiled. I knew it was because he was very busy with his surgical writings and thought this challenge will keep us busy. This was the measure of the man, always pushing and encouraging others to reach for excellence while working hard himself. Ima and I both shared a passion for gardening. I love flowers, he loved fruits. Each day, when he returned from his walks, he would inspect our little garden. He was constantly looking for any piece of land to plant more fruit trees. Right until the very end, he would always ask, have you watered my guava seedlings? That was my Ima. He cared about his organic fruits. We need to thank God for everything that the Lord has done for him, blessing him with a great mind of wisdom, a heart of compassion, and endless energy to serve. We pray for his eternal rest. From your loving wife, Awulata, Thank you for the life you shared with me, and I will always remember it. 53 years of life with you has been incredible. Ima, I thank you. Ya wajogbang suolo. Oke huom saminya. Rest in perfect peace. Dear Daddy, I can't believe you're gone. I'll miss you so much. I cannot think of a time where you have not been there for me, so it will be very hard for me. However, you left us with many gifts of many happy memories, which I'll treasure for years to come. I will miss coming to sit in the summer hut with you, as well as our little and our long chats. Somehow, everything seemed possible and doable after a session with you there. You modeled hard work, an innate ability to strive for excellence, integrity, humility, and care for humanity. And I'm very grateful that I had you in my life as a father. I'm so pleased you were able to enjoy the classical recital on your birthday in October. You were so happy, and that made me very happy. Above all, you lived out your faith, and that is your legacy. You taught us that without Christ, we're nothing, and we carry that message on. Daddy, Rest in perfect peace in the presence of the almighty God, Elise. Daddy, this is indeed surreal. You have been ever so constant in our lives that it seems as if you've just gone on one of your numerous trips. Even though we are hurting so badly, your footprints are so stamped all over us that you'll never ever be forgotten. We miss you badly. We feel your presence in so many ways. Please stay closer. Thank you for all that you did for each one of us and our families. Your love for humanity, family, people's well-being, and general humility are trademarks that made you who you are. It would be impossible to enumerate the various lives you have touched, Daddy. Since your passing, we have met people from all walks of life, telling us personal stories about what you did for them or their relatives. We love you so much, Daddy. We'll remember all the conversations you shared with us, the stories you told us that really made us laugh, I remember those dreadful mornings when we had to take one spoon of Nivaquin from the dark bottle. I recall that I was the last to take mine because I just couldn't stand the taste. I would try my best to sweet talk you out of not taking it. I'd never got successful with that. You were so gentle yet so firm. I remember the fond memories of you ca caring for and doting over your first grandchild, Irabina. These are precious memories which will stay with us forever. Your passion for classical music rubbed on all of us. You encouraged us to give off our best in whatever situation we find ourselves in. We kept running to you for advice, ranging from construction to health to financial investments and even gardening. Where do we go now? Our family gatherings will never be the same again. You were present in all our milestones, engagements, weddings, outdoorings, birthday parties, and several anniversaries. I know that we have big shoes to fill, but we'll try hard. We count ourselves thankful to call you daddy. May your kind, gentle, and humble soul rest peacefully from your toil study.
tribute from David. How do I even begin to write a tribute to you, my dearest father? Completely lost for words is an understatement for how I feel at this moment. You have been an ever-present reassurance all my life. One cannot begin to think of what life would be without you being around. From my formative years, it has been the fondest memories that bring a smile and a chuckle. As a child, and one as mischievous as I was, I remember you saying, the neighbors said they thought I had only one son called David, as that's the only name that was called out loud for all the obvious wrong reasons. And oh, how I so wish you could shout out my name again like you used to. Through my early adulthood, you taught me the importance of hard work and emphasized achieving by merit and not favor. Such has been your inspiration that it was impossible to choose a, a career other than your subspecialty as I sleepwalked into the surgical training by default. And yes, there were numerous midnight panic calls to you for help. I knew you secretly enjoyed them, particularly when I was faced with a challenging surgical emergency on call. Your wise words always resulted in a favorable outcome. You also meticulously followed up on the cases we discussed, most of which I had already forgotten. I am ever so grateful to God that I have had the opportunity to spend time with you, particularly over the last few months, and more so closer to your passing on to glory. I stand amazed and in awe of your life and achievements which have eclipsed many great men and continues to confound me. I will terribly miss you, Daddy. Rest in peace. Tribute from Timmy. Daddy, it is hard to imagine you are not with us anymore. You've always been a calming presence in my life. I admire you greatly and would cherish our summer hat catch-ups even more now. You were a great listener and encourager, always having a thoughtful way of navigating through rather complex challenges. You were, of course, very discerning. I remember one Saturday afternoon when you visited me in boarding school. I was in Form 1, trying hard to exaggerate a cough I had to hopefully persuade you to take me home with you for the weekend. You just smiled and shook your head, but also empathized with my plight. I knew the game was up. You had already examined me with your eyes. You were a man of service. To you, life wasn't about you, but rather getting on with the job of sorting out others. You, we shared you with family and your busy professional schedule, but we so loved and valued our time with you. Above all, you showed us what matters most, service to our Lord God, and I thank you for this. I miss you deeply but I'm consoled by the fact that you lived a full life. Tribute from Ashifi. I have come to understand that the true measure of a man is how much love he gives, how selflessly he shares whatever he can to help others, how consistently he lifts up those around him with a kind word, a funny thought. My dad shared with me Philippians 4.4. 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Thank you, Daddy, for introducing me to Christian things. Thank you for displaying your faith to me as a young boy. Thank you for being a role model for what a father should be. I am sad you are no longer here, but I would always remember Philippians 4, verse 4. Thank you. The final tribute is the tribute from the government of Ghana. Tribute from government of Ghana. And I do this 
as the Health Minister on behalf of the President, His Excellency Nana Adodankwa Akufuado. The late Professor Emmanuel Kwe Achampo lived most of his life impacting and changing the lives of people in both the medical and academic fields. After years of practice in the early 60s abroad, where he worked in renowned hospitals and changed the lives of many, he returned home in 1967 to join the teaching staff of the University of Ghana Medical School as a registrar and then as a lecturer. Whilst a lecturer at the University of Ghana, he won a Commonwealth Medical Fellowship Award to further his studies in surgery at the University College London Medical School. He doubled as an ordinary senior lecturer in surgery at the UCL Medical School Surgical Unit. He was then awarded his Master's of Surgery degree to become the first Ghanaian to earn a Master's degree in surgery. Due to his hard work, he became a senior lecturer at the University of Ghana and then as an associate professor in 1976 and a fellow of the Ghana Academy of Arts and Sciences. In 1981, he was appointed head of the Department of Surgery and subsequently appointed the Dean of the University of Ghana Medical School. His dedication towards the job gained him honor across the world. He received both national and international honorary awards. In 2015, he was awarded an honorary fellowship in the American College of Surgeons. He was also a fellow of the Royal College of Surgeons of England, the Royal College of Surgeons Edinburgh, the International College of Surgeons, the Ghana Academy of Arts and Sciences, of which he once served as the Vice President of the Sciences and the Foundation Fellow of the West African College of Surgeons, and served as its President from 1997 to 1999. Professor Achampo was also a recipient of National Honours in Ghana and Senegal, and in 2016, he received the Order of the Volta Award. Professor Achampon also authored articles and co-authored a number of articles in the field of medical education and surgery. This included Medicine for African Students, Modern Development in Surgery, Medical Education and National Development in Africa, Breast Cancer in Ghana. He was a national asset, and his demise has created a vacuum. The government of Ghana appreciates his service to the nation. Our deepest condolence goes to Madame Catherine Eulata Konete Ahulu, the wife of the late professor, their children and grandchildren, and the entire family. Fare thee well, Professor Emmanuel Kuea Champo. May the Almighty God keep you safe till we meet again. I thank you. We shall sing from the Methodist team and hymn numbered 308, after which we take the scripture readings. We shall sing only the first and the last stanzas. Lord, your word abideth. <laughs>
first scripture reading is from Revelation 7, 9 to 17. I read from the King James Version. After this I beheld, and lo, a great multitude which no man could number, of all nations and kindreds and peoples and tongues, stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands, and cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God, which sitteth upon the throne, and unto the Lamb. And all the angels stood round about the throne, and about the elders and the four beasts, and fell before the throne on their faces, and worshipped God, saying, Amen, blessing and glory, and wisdom and thanksgiving, and honor and power and might be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are these that are arrayed in white robes, and whence came they? And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said to me, These are they which came out of the great tribulation, and have washed their robes, and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore they are before the throne of God, and serve him day and night in his temple, and he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more, neither shall the sun light on them, nor any heat. For the lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them, and shall lead them unto the living fountains of waters, and God shall wipe away all the tears from their eyes. Here ends the reading. Our second scripture reading is taken from the Gospel of John, chapter 14, from 1 to 6, and verse 27. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go ye know, and the way ye know. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? And Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Peace I live with you, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. The hymn before the sermon is MHB 602. We shall sing the first two and the last two stanzas. 602. Father, I know that all my life is portioned out for me. We shall sing standing, please.
seated and let us pray. Father, we are most grateful to you for this time as we fellowship together with you on this occasion when we bid farewell to our dearly beloved Professor Champo. Pray that you hallow this hour and speak to us through your word and comfort our hearts in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank God for this opportunity to share a few words from scripture on behalf of my presiding bishop, the most reverend Dr. Paul Kwabna Buafo, who is also engaged in another part of the country at this moment. He sends his condolences to the wife, children, and family of Professor Champong and wishes that the peace of the Lord will be with you. May the peace of the Lord be with all of us. Amen. Our text for us, our meditation is from um, John 14, 1 to 3. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My Father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I'm going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me. That you also may be where I am. And our theme for us to reflect on is the promise of Jesus in this text. As we celebrate the life of Professor Echampong, our beloved, we are reminded that he has entered life itself. Well, the life we live here is but a shadow of the life hereafter. As one has said, death is a fact of life and a great mystery. And it says, this world is the land of the dying. The next is the land of the living. And August says, death to the Christian is the funeral of all his sorrows and evils and the resurrection of all his joys. So we are in the land of the dying and each one of us is going to die at one point or the other. And we are grateful to God at this time for the life of our prof, Professor Champo, um, who has been described in many words in our tributes. Ashrifi agree with him when he describes his father as selfless, shares whatever he has with other people. He's a man who loves to give how consistently he lifts up those around him with a kind word. And I experienced this when I was chaplain at Rechurch, where he worships with his family. A number of times he will come to encourage me after service. A few words, kind words, and that encouraged me a lot. And you can see in the um, texts, the tributes, how Professor has been described. We thank the president and the government for honoring him with this service. It is indeed deserving of such a man. Probably many people do not know him outside Accra, but this is a man well known and is described as meticulous, dedicated, skillful, and accomplished surgeon, a consummate enthusiastic teacher for whom the safety of the patient was not only paramount as he imparted the delicate hands on scale of surgery to the special several specialists he trained but also to restore health that which had caused the disease and in one of the tributes it reads that is a master surgeon whose expertise even temperedness calm demeanor warm personality and friendly disposition drew many both young and old to him. These are true words, not just mere words. They are words that rightly describe the person we are seeing of today, Professor Achampo. And what adds to it all is that I found him to be a very humble and unassuming person. He will come to church simply dressed and be very simple in all things. And he was involved in the church as well, 
in spite of all these uh, activities that he was involved in. We have really lost a person worth emulating, and the characteristics that have been dis de uh, described today in all the tribus from beginning to the end indicates the type of people that we desire to have in our nation. This is a man that we want to have, the kind of man we like to have in our nation. A man or woman of integrity, hard-working person, a man who is humble and who is led by his faith in the Lord Jesus to do what he does with passion and compassion. Death, in one word, is separation. The soul and the spirit depart from the body. But where does it go? This service gives us time to give God thanks for the memory of such a great person as Professor Echampo. The family, your suffering is very deep. And the truest thing that can be said about suffering is that in the midst of death, it is not a problem so much as a mystery, as death itself is a mystery. And the cause of your suffering or sorrow is death. A problem can be solved and be rid of. A mystery can only become, you can only become aware of, accept, and live with. So blessed are the dead who die in Christ, like Professor Echampon they will have their rest in him always. And this is said to comfort you that death is a mystery, a mystery we all seek to find answers. And the answer is in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. When we have Jesus, we have the key to the mystery of death, for he himself has walked through it. Another thing that may comfort you and make death more tolerable on this occasion, even though it will not eliminate your pain at this time, is the fact that Jesus, our Lord and Savior, also went through the same barrier of suffering. He even witnessed the death of his dear friend Lazarus and the grief of his sisters, Mary and Martha. He knows your suffering and what you are going through because it was part of his experience, and he cares for his people who trust him and are going through this phase of life. But the hope of eternal glory is the comfort of our faith that is behind today's sadness. A confident hope in the promise of the faithful Lord that eases the pain. And again, Jesus comes to comfort us as he did for the sisters of Lazarus and the widow of Nain who had lost it her only son, and was beside herself. Jesus raised this son up, comforted this woman. Or oh, Jairus daughter, how everybody said, oh, he's there, don't worry the master any longer. And yet, Jesus asked him to have faith in him, only believe. So, family, brothers and sisters in the Lord, let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God and believe also in me, as the text says. My father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I'm going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I'll come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be with me. Brethren, he does not abandon us, our Lord Jesus, in such dark moments. And that is why the psalmist and all of us can say, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for thou art with me. Following the above assurances to all of us, the promise of Jesus in the text unfolds. There are many mansions. And two, I go to prepare a place for you. That is, there is a place that we go from here when our bodies are separated from the soul and the spirit. In the Bible describes the place as heaven and hell. Thirdly, I shall come back and take you to myself, which is a reference to the second coming of Jesus Christ. As we celebrate Christmas, Christmas is just ahead in the, at the corner. 
Um, we are in Advent, looking forward to the birth of Jesus or remembering the birth of Jesus. But that also is reminding us of his promise that he will come again a second time. And we need to get ourselves prepared. That where I am, you may be also. That is in the continual presence of the Lord. These are the four things in the text that we need to take note of. And the first one, this is the greatest promise made by the greatest person who ever lived on earth. And it is about the greatest place ever imagined, as the Bible describes Revelation 21. And the purpose of the promise is for our eternal comfort and peace. Let not your hearts be troubled, the Lord says to us. It is also required of us that the greatest preparation be made by all of us to enter and enjoy this place. You cannot just walk into the place. You must prepare yourself for the place. It holds forth the greatest prospects for all of us. I will come again as verified in Paul's letter in 1 Thessalonians that Jesus will come again. The dead will rise first. And then those of us who are alive will also join him in the heaven. And then we'll be with the Lord forever in 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 to 17. These are some of the promises that the Lord Jesus Christ has given to a trusting heart. So I appeal to all of us on this occasion to have hearts that trust in the Lord Jesus, hearts that believe that he is the Savior of the world. And these are some of the promises that you find in Scripture. You will surely forget your trouble, recalling it only as what has gone by. Or, for his anger lasts only a moment, but his favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping may remain for a night, but rejoicing comes in the morning. A righteous man may have many troubles, but the Lord delivers them from all of it. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. No weapon that is fashioned against you shall prosper, and every tongue that rises against you shall be refuted. This is the, the promise made to the children of God. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. And Jesus says, my grace is sufficient for you. And our test ends this or caps it up. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. Because there are many mansions to cater for all who believe Jesus as the Christ and the Savior. This is a stated fact by the Lord himself. And he says, if it were not so, I would have told you that I go to prepare a place for you. And when I go and prepare a place, I shall come back again and take you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. This comes from the God of promise, who fails not, but is faithful to the end. His yes is yes, and his no is no. As we find in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, in verse 18. But as surely as God is faithful, our message to you is not yes and no. For the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who was preached among you by us, by me and Silas and Timothy, was not yes and no, but in him it has always been yes. For no matter how many promises God has made, they are yes in Christ. And so through him, the amen is spoken of by us to the glory of God. So when Jesus promises us that he is preparing a place for us and he will come back, it is true. It is yes, he will definitely prepare a place and he will definitely come for us. The second thing I'd like to draw attention to in this text is that there is a place to go after death. And all religions, including African traditional religion, affirm this in their belief system. It is a universal revelation of God to all people all over the world. And Christianity in particular affirms that heaven is real and hell is real. And we must prepare ourselves for either places by our choice to believe that God has loved us and given us a savior through Jesus Christ to save us from our sin or else walk in disbelief to our own detriment. It is a matter of faith. And we call you to have faith in Jesus Christ at this service. 
It is not a matter of just being a church member or going to church or a religious meeting. It is not just church attendance. But what God is calling for is a relationship with his son, Jesus Christ. You are invited into a relationship that takes you to the place where he is. I believe um, Prof, um, in engaging him, will ask me a lot of questions, a number of questions. And on this occasion, if I were to preach to Professor Champo, he will ask me a few questions like, is it, is it clear in the Bible that Jesus died? He'll say, yes, he died. And in the Roman times, Roman history shows that. But did he rise? Of course, he did. He did rise again. And scripture affirms it. And history also affirms that Jesus died and on the third day. He rose again from the dead. He has overcome death. Brothers and sisters, death is inevitable and all will certainly die. The suddenness of death calls attention to our momentary existence and our need to consider our lives carefully and live for him so that these promises become useful to us. Not long ago, you were very young, perhaps in school. When I knew Prof, he was um, a young person, not very old, not very elderly. But now he's 89 or thereabouts. Your mother, brothers, and sisters were around you not long ago. Perhaps your grandparents too. But so soon, some of them have gone to eternal glory, and now you are a father or grandfather or mother. Time flies so fast around us, and death beckons one or the other. We must all prepare ourselves. COVID-19 has indeed worsened the situation with all these Delta and Omicron uh, variants that the, pres the president has spoken about. We need to be careful. We need to continue to observe all the protocols wherever we may be, especially during this Christmas period. It is very important for all of us to be obedient. A philosopher, historian, and not Tony B once said, a man, man alone has foreknowledge of his coming death, and possessing this foreknowledge has a chance, if he chooses to take it, of pondering over the strangeness of his destiny, has at least a possibility of coping with it, since he's endowed with the capacity to think about it in advance, and to face it and deal with it in the same way that is worthy of human dignity. Alas, how many of us face it and factor it Jesus has promised to come again and take us to the place. And Professor Champon is asking all of us, where is this place? Are we ready to go to the place? How well prepared are we to go to the place? I have encountered a few people who have had near-death um, situations in their lives. And I've been witness to the manner in which their lives have been dramatically changed. There is a place to go. If Jesus has died and is alive, where is he? He must be in a place. Prof will ask. He definitely must be in a place. So where is he? He says, I'm going to prepare a place. When I prepare a place, I shall come back. And I remember one of my uh, fathers who candidated me into the ministry. After serving for over 40 years in ministry, he retired. And in 2009, fell into a coma. And after coming out of it, he described what he saw. He was taken or led by a person to a place he had never seen or imagined before. A wonderful and beautiful and peaceful place. And then he was taken to another part of that same place. And there... The houses were like shanties, shanty town buildings, and so on. And he mentions colleagues he knew in the ministry who had passed on, mentioned them by names. He met them in the place. And they told him, Your place is also here. But he determined in his heart, I want to be in that other place. I want to be in that other place. I don't want to be in the shanty place. I want to be in that place. Do you want to be in that place? His life was dramatically changed afterwards. And you could see that indeed 
something had happened that draws our attention to the fact that there's a place to go. Let us give our hearts to the Lord Jesus Christ, and then he will lead us to the place. God bless you all. Amen. May the Lord add his blessings to the teaching of his word. A very important safety announcement. Will the owners or drivers of Toyota Corolla, gray in color, and Toyota Highlander, also gray in color, registered GE 3918 and GX 747613. The numbers again, GE 3918 and GX 747613. Toyota Corolla and Toyota Highlander, gray in color. Please move your cars immediately. Thank you. Emeritus Professor Emmanuel Kwe Champon lived his faith. Can I please ask all of us to stand up as we also affirm our faith in the words of the creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Thank you. Please take your seats. It is now time for us to show Christian charity. We give our offerings. The sides persons, the ushers, have already positioned the offering bowls, and uh, Susanna Usu Memorial Choral will lead us in singing melodies as we take our offering. Thank you. Please guide us to come forward.
Let us bless our offering. We give thee, but it's thine own. Whatever gift we have ever received has come from you. Out of these, we have brought you tokens in memory and in worship of the life of our brother, father, grandfather, colleague, friend, emeritus professor, Emmanuel Kwei Achampong. May you use this to expand your kingdom in a way that he himself would have loved to do. Bless each and every one of us. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Dearly beloved, this morning a grateful nation shows up to celebrate an illustrious son of the motherland. It is time for us to lay the wreath. Laying the wreath on behalf of the government and people of Ghana, it is my delight to welcome, representing the President of the Republic, the Minister for Health, the Honorable Kweku Ajiman Menu. We thank you, the President of the Republic. The second wreath will be laid by the widow, Madame Catherine Achampo. Thank you. 
The third wreath laid by the children, led by Emmanuel Ashrifi Achampong, supported by his siblings. The read to be laid by the family will be done by Mr. Lovelace Amar, supported by the family elders. The tribute, I beg your pardon, the wreath to be laid by the church will be done by the Rich Church Council Chair, Madame Abigail Ama.
Professional Rollers to be done by me, Ashri Mpling, Jassi of Dome Fasi. And finally, on behalf of all the colleges of physicians and surgeons, by the president of the West Africa College of Surgeons, Professor Peter Donko. We summon the grace and peace of God to rest with you all. Now, dearly beloved, the commendation service. Friends in the Lord, we shall now commend the soul of Emeritus Professor Emmanuel Kweya Champon to the hands of God Almighty as we rise and sing from the Methodist hymn 831. Give me the rings of soul to rise within the veil and see the saints above. How great their joys, 
how bright their glories be. We shall sing the first two and the last stanzas only. Shall we please remain standing as we give thanks to God? I shall call the name of Professor three times. And at each naming, we shall all respond with the words, thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Emeritus Professor Emmanuel Kwe Achampong. Thanks be to God. Our beloved husband, father, Emmanuel Kwe Achampong, thanks be to God. Professor Emeritus Emmanuel Kwe Achampong, thanks be to God. Please sit and let us pray. You are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive praise, honor, Glory and thanks for your great goodness which sustains us in times of joy as well as in sorrow. You are worthy to receive our thanks for the life of our brother, Emeritus Professor Emmanuel Kweya Champong, and the savagery which he gave to his fa family and church and this nation. And for the gift of love which has brought us together as friends and family on this occasion to sustain one another and to witness the life of great Achampo. All glory be to you for sending your son Jesus Christ into our midst to die for us and for raising him from the dead that we might know your saving power. Father, all honor be to you, everlasting Father, for the spirit which teaches and guides us into all truth, without whom you could be groping in the darkness of doubt and fear. To the one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be glory honor and power forever and ever. Amen. May we, with all who live, have died in the, through faith, have perfect fulfillment and joy in your eternal everlasting glory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Shall we stand as we commend his soul to the hands of Almighty God the last time? Let us commend the soul of Professor Champong to the hands of God Almighty. Merciful God, you have made us all and given your son Jesus Christ for our redemption. We commend Emeritus Professor Emmanuel Kwe Champong to your perfect care, your mercy and wisdom, for in you alone we put our trust. Amen. Thank you, you may be seated. I shall now invite representatives from the family 
led by a father's daughter, Mrs. Ellis Ansong, to please proceed to receive the offertory and thereafter render thanks. His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Ghana, His Excellency, the Vice President of the Republic of Ghana, Honorable Ministers, Honorable MPs, recognized groups, all protocols observed. The Achampon and Allied families are deeply grateful for the show of love and support um, during the funeral service of our late father, Emeritus Professor Emmanuel Kweya Champon. We don't know what to say. Our first thanks goes to His Excellency the President for honoring our father. We want to say thank you. Um, from here, we are going to the cemetery to bury our father. And it's a private barrier. Please, it's a private barrier. And after closing, all of us will go to the eastern grounds of the conference center. All of us will go to the conference grounds uh, of the eastern side of the conference center. Thank you. This morning's service has been made possible because of the generosity of the state and would like to particularly acknowledge the presence of the President of the Republic, Nana Adudankwa Akufuado, the Vice President of the Republic, His Excellency Al Haji Dr. Mohamedou Baumia the Minister of Health, the Honorable Kweku Ajiman Menu, the Deputy Chief of Staff, Office of the President, Mr. Emmanuel Eduama Bosman, the Presidential Advisor on Health, Dr. Anthony Nsia Sari, Senior Advisor to the Vice President, Mr. Seth Owari, the Chief of Air Staff, Air Vice Marshal, Frank Hansen, the Chief of Naval Staff, the Rear Admiral Issa Adam Yakubu, the President of the West African College of Surgeons, Professor Peter Donko, the Dean of the University of Ghana Medical School, Professor Margaret Latte, the Rector of Ghana College of Surgeons and Ghana College of Physicians and Surgeons, I beg your pardon, Professor Richard Adanu, the CEO of Kolebu Teaching Hospital, Dr. Opoku Wari Ampoma, the General Secretary of the Ghana Medical Association, Dr. Titus Bayo, the CEO of the National Health Insurance Authority, Dr. Gianni Selby, the board chair of the NHIA, Mr. Enes Kwakun, a close associate of our emeritus professor and a very decorated physician, ladies and gentlemen, Professor Yao Edujemfi, a presidential advisor on health, and another celebrated statesman and associate of our late father, the Omanghene of Asokore Mampong, Nana Supibibi Krobia Asante, affectionately known to us as Professor S.K.B. Asante. In the company of many others so innumerable to mention, we say accept the warm and generous recognition of this gathering. This morning, Mr. President, allow me the pleasure of also acknowledging the ministers of the gospel who have come in handy to make this celebration a befitting one. We're joined by the minister in charge of the Presbyterian Church of Ghana, Resurrection Congregation Abuba, Reverend Andrew Shadow, the minister in charge at the Presbyterian Church Living Stream Asenye, Reverend D.K. Hammond. We have the star of the sea, 
Catholic Church, Dansuman Last Stop, represented by Father Theodore Kwe. We're pleased to receive the General Director for Ministries of the Methodist Church Ghana, the Very Reverend Dr. William A. Imperijichi. The Accra Ray Church is, is represented here through the Methodist Minister, the Right Reverend Samson Kweku Jabing. The Administrative Bishop for the Methodist Church Ghana, the Right Reverend Michael A. Bosman joins us. And from the Accra Ray Church, Reverend Kofi Ankama Asamwa, together with the Chair of the Accra Ray Church, Madam Abigail Ama. We say we thank you all. A special gift to this occasion comes from the General Secretary of the Ghana Medical Association, who, Mr. President, in acknowledgement of what our father taught and labored for, have decided to waive off strikes for one year. I think we should thank them ever so much. A round of applause. The day thou gavest, Lord, is ended. The closing hymn. Shall we stand? receive the benediction. Emeritus Professor Emmanuel Kwe Achampo, the peace of the Lord be with you and may you rest in the bosom of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you all and grant you the peace of the Lord. The Lord bless each one of you and grant you his peace now and always. Amen. The Lord be with you. Please be seated. Better party fall in. Much our music, please.
Hello? May I request we all stand, please? We'll keep standing as the president and the vice president leaves the funeral grounds before we all depart. Thank you very much. Thank you all for coming, and may God richly bless you. We have a donation stand right here by Kind Kelsey of Bone Financial Services. 
We encourage all who came with donations to please proceed to the table and do so for the family. Once again, on behalf of the state and the family, we'd like to say thank you all for coming. Happily have we met, happily may we part, and happily may we meet again.